What it is, y'all. Welcome back. We have another Dime Match episode today, episode 18. And man, was this a good episode. Uh, I, I feel like this season, I don't know, maybe it's just me. You guys let me know in the comments. Is it just me or has this been like the most well produced season? I won't say it's been. I'm going to say it's been the best season. I'm just going to go out there and say it's been the best season. Um, just from a, a, surely from a production standpoint, there are people that are going to prefer season three just because that whole Zenos arc was amazing. Uh, this arc is also fantastic, but regarding, less regarding the story, more regarding just production of the episodes and the pacing, I think this has been the best season we've had yet. Personally, just personal opinion. Um, another like solid, I'm going to give this a solid 9 out of 10. Uh, there were very, very few moments in this episode that weren't just like at its peak. Uh, this is another really well produced episode. Great animation, great storytelling. There was like no down moments. And they keep like, and the one thing that I could say about this episode versus like, or this season versus other seasons at the very end, they always like, leave a little bit in there and they make you wonder and they make you guess. And they had a great moment here to like really bait us on something interesting. They gave it to us and then they dropped something even more. So let's just jump in and talk about it. Okay. First of all, we get, uh, remember last episode we had Kaguya that literally just ripped a new one into Ryu, like, uh, <laughs> you know, young bright eyes, renew, uh, Ryu, uh, and Kagi was just like, no, here's reality. Here's how things go. You're being ridiculous. Uh, and Elise comes back in and she's, you know, like good cop, essentially. Like, you know, yeah, you're you're not necessarily wrong, but Kagi is kind of right, though she didn't say it the right way, and blah, 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 blah. So the long and the short of it is Elise is like, without, you know, distinctly taking sides, just kind of like, Kagi is just kind of have a point. Uh, so... Kaguya has a point. It's it it's a, it it sucks, but it's facts. So we get this whole like an exchange and this perspective here, and it's really 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 interesting. Uh, and then to make matters just that much more fun, uh, we jump right into the episode. And well, say we obviously get the intro. After the intro, we jump right in. And if you guys remember, at the end of the last episode, we had the Zenos jump in, and you immediately get to see people that have no clue what's going on. You've got you've got Oka, you've got Shigusa, and they're both like, uh, "Why are the monsters fighting the monsters?" And even they begin to notice them like. Oh, we recognize this monster from back there. We recognize they're putting two and two together, but I don't think they quite know completely what's going on. Like to them, it's just monsters fighting monsters. Um, a little bit, a little bit of foreshadowing in the next episode coming. So the long of the short, I'm not going to jump into any spoilers here. I'm just going to say a little foreshadowing there. So the long of the short of it is, the uh, the search party comes in. You've got Subaki that comes in. You've got uh, uh, Chloe, Anya, and Lunar who are immediately just jump into the fray and start wailing on the monsters. And Lily's like, "Hey, uh, not the monsters that are armored. Just the regular mon like the armored monsters that are armored. Probably just you know let 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 them be. They're 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 cool. They're they're all right. Doesn't really explain it. Just get all right." Because we can imagine, like, the more people that know about the Xenos, the more in danger they become. So, in a way, this is kind of hazardous to them. They are really putting themselves out there. Like, I know to them it's just saving Bell's crew. But there are now a lot of people involved in this that, more than they probably would like to have involved in it, frankly. Uh, so... One of my favorite exchanges here is between Subaki and Wealth. And you can tell with Subaki, she's just like, there's a little bit of jealousy there. A lot of snarkiness. And she immediately figures out what Wealth's weapon is. And she's just like, how dare you? That's amazing. But how dare you? <laughs> and I love the exchange. Like, it is so much fun to just see them go back and forth like this. Because for all intents and purposes, Wealth has done something 
amazing with that weapon. But not that it's necessarily like, at least that I'm aware of against any rules. It's just not the expectation. It's abnormal. Uh, so the Zenos are immediately clued in. Uh, Marie is just like a uh, little mermaid girl. If you remember her from, from part one is like, of course you watched the episode, uh, pulls lead aside and is like, Hey, bell went down here. He's getting chased by a bigger monster. Uh, and, and, uh, lead is just like, you know, once again, doesn't necessarily want to just call out in, I say Japanese in human language and be like, Hey, we go over here, so he just kind of roars, and of course, all the rest of the Zenos go, "Ah, cool, follow." And even I can't remember the little goblin one's name, but uh, he goes to Lily and is like, "Here's what he said. He said, you know, Bell's down here. We gotta go. We're gonna like forge a path. You guys follow." And Lily immediately turns around to the crew and is like, uh, "We're going this way," and they're like, "Why?" Are you out of your damn mind? She said, trust me. And I love you. Even, even Cassandra's just, or uh, Daphne's like, no, you literally are making this up as you go. This is, this is, we are going to die if we follow this. And in the end, they go. And I love it too, because Boris is like, yeah, y'all have fun. I'm out. I'm out. And, <laughs> and Aisha's like, uh, the hell you are. Literally holds her sword to his throat. It's like, the hell you are. You, you're coming along. So, what's really neat is you start to get all the levels for everybody. You find out that uh, Chloe, Anya, and Luna are all about level four, um, which tells you they do still have their Falna. Um, you know, ev- like pretty much everybody's on like an even playing field at this point, with the exception of most of Hestia's party, which is pretty far behind. But you've got a lot of level fours now, so you've got a lot of people that can lead this. And you've got, you know, a bunch of the Zenos that are clearly on that level, if not higher. So you, you've got a hell of a search party going on here. And next thing you know, they just take off and we jump back to Ryu and bell and man, they are in dire straits. They are constantly surrounded by monsters and you even get to notice and I'm just going to call it here for the Dragon Ball fans out there. It's pretty obvious that Bell has a Zenkai boost at this point. Like it is just, it is painfully obvious. He literally has a Zenkai boost. Uh, He just keeps getting beaten down. Even Ryu's like, he should be at his limit and he's not at his limit. What in the hell is going on? And he, um, but, but Bell really smart here. He starts to realize he's like, if I faint, uh, attack, they'll come in for the kill, and at that point, like, they'll come in for a one-shot kill, at that point, he can counter. And when he counters them, uh, obviously, then sometimes they attack each other, as we've seen, uh, sometimes he's able to get, like, an easy counter on them, and, and things like that. So we really see a tactical bell here. We don't see a bell that's just going ham. We see a bell that's very thoughtful, and very tactical, and is, is has really matured as an adventurer. It's really great to see. I'm loving this portion of the story. And uh, as things just go on and as things progress, now Ryu's starting to get attacked and and they're surrounded. And they get surrounded by these skeletal monsters. I mean, they're, they're just constantly in, the, in this episode getting fought and fought and fought. Uh, and Ryu does kind of like a little background here as she talks about uh, I guess Fells was able to uh, corner her shortly after the fact, and was like, "Hey, uh, I know about I know about the Juggernaut. I know about this. I know about that." And you get a little bit of the background. But while they're kind of talking about this, they get surrounded by these skeletal monsters, and those skeletal monsters pr- produce—I say produce—they are a legitimate threat. They're a real honest to goodness threat. And they even mentioned like, well, they are so well guarded. We cannot, uh, yeah, we cannot target their stones. And admittedly, I'm siphoning through the episode here. I'm trying to get the name of the, uh, the, the monster. Uh, but this monster pops up and I'm trying to remember its name and it's legitimately uh, escaping me at the moment. Um, but this thing, as soon as it pops into into, uh, into action, Ryu is like, those spikes are poisoned, get down. And they duck, and it just eradicates. 
I mean, it wipes everything out around them. Uh, and the things that aren't wiped out in the near vicinity, then it shoots like this fire breath and just wipes everything else out. Now, because there's fire, obviously they're able to use one of their little, uh, the, the magic fire items and uh, the ones that Bell was using with his, uh, his firebolt. And they're basically able to use that more or less like a grenade and they blow them up. And it's like, it's, you know, they go from how the hell are we going to get out of this to like this perfect storm of, I guess, monster on monster that gives them this out. And right as they're catching their breath, bam, poison quill hits Bell dead on the shoulder. That's the scene behind me. And one of the things, and, and once again, to the animation team, I give JC staff so much flack. I give them so much flack. But if there's one thing that they are really good at in this season, it's giving you this sense of like urgency, dread, um, pain, like all of these emotions go through Bell's face in a split second. And they're really good at drawing that out. So like facial expressions definitely are their forte. I, I give them flack in a lot of places, but facial expressions Definitely. Like, it, it takes me back to a lot of, like, the 90s anime with uh, the hand-drawn facial expressions. A lot of, you know, everything now is digital. And you just don't get a lot of that. And it's it's a very classical style that really, really presents a good uh, visual dialogue, I guess, of everything that's happening internally to Bell. And uh, it looks bad. Like, it looks horrible. And he rips out the spike and... And he takes a Coogan, his, his new knife, and just jams it in. And you're like, yeah, my brain's like, okay, it's drain the poison or whatever, right? Nah. It begins to absorb the poison, and it literally just pulls the toxins out of his body. And Ryu even stops, and she's like, is that what I think it is? And he's like, yeah, it's forged from, from Unicorn Blade. It's literally an anti-poison weapon. So he's able to use it to nullify all the poison in his body, which is fantastic. Of course, now he's got a festering wound. Or I say festering. He's had an open wound. I'm not going to exaggerate. But he does. He has a stab mark in his shoulder still. But I suppose better that than dying to poison, right? So obviously this is not something they can use like over and over again. He can't get stabbed you know, 57 times and go, ah, well, I'll just jab my knife into myself repeatedly that's gonna bode pretty poorly but nevertheless it's a it's a quick uh quick fix to the situation at hand and it, it was that amazing moment uh they were able to beat the other one uh and move on and you begin to see like the juggernaut is now uh on the move and they're really 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 building up to the showdown between bell and the juggernaut and the other search party now is on their way. It is so exciting. But what's really, really, really awesome here at the end of the episode, and I've, I've gone on way too long. I, I love this episode so much. Um, the end of the episode, they see the Colosseum, as they call it. And uh, Ryu's like, I know where we're at. We know how, you know how to get out of here. And then you begin to hear this sound. And, and it sounds almost like the juggernaut encroaching. But all I'll say is, remember I said foreshadowing for the beginning of the episode. Next episode is going to be an interesting one, to say the least. So stay tuned, guys. Episode 19 coming up next week. Like, comment, share. Sorry, it's a longer review than I ever expected, but I really, 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 really love this episode. Um, and it wasn't the most action-packed episode, but it really was probably one of the most lore driven episodes and like you know like one of those episodes leading up to the final climax of the season and it was chef's kiss fantastic i think i gave it an eight out of ten i'm gonna give it a nine out of ten and and i'm a harsh critic usually let me know your thoughts down below like comment share and uh yeah i'll catch you guys next week for episode 19 of damachi we're getting close to the end guys and it is looks like it's not gonna slow down